Behind me, I have my 1996 Dodge Ram 1500. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I uh, went about protecting it with POR15. I've already gone ahead and started, but I decided that I'd make a video. All you've missed so far is that I have gone ahead and removed all the flaky rust and paint. And what I'm gonna do now is pressure wash it with a little Ryobi pressure washer. I have a bigger gas powered pressure washer, but I decided that it would probably be best if I used the smaller electric one in the garage because it's kind of crappy outside. So, and I can't move this right now because it's on jacks. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how I go about doing that before I start the actual degreasing metal etch and uh, actually painting it with the POR15. Here's what the frame looks like at the moment. It's all sanded down, looking really nice. Um, I'm gonna do it in either thirds or fourths. Um, this is what it looked like before. Um, what I used to achieve this look, um, this part I was able to do mostly with the wire wheel brush. And this is a game changer. Um, if you can, either use an air-powered one or you can get a battery-powered one like the one that I have. Uh, the battery-powered one's not as good as an air one, um, but it got the job done and it saved me a lot of time. Anywhere that I couldn't get with that, I used a wire brush. And then anywhere that I couldn't get with the wire brush, I used a screwdriver and just scraped it and it worked pretty well. It took a lot of time, but... It looks really good and the paint should stick really well to it. Now, this is the little Ryobi pressure washer. It doesn't shoot out. It's like 200, 300 PSI, but it'll get the job done for what I need it to do and should blast out any of that gunk or any rust that's left over and uh, make it really nice for that uh, degreaser. So hopefully the degreaser is not having to do much because it should all be blasted off already. But anything that's left behind, hopefully the degreaser gets it and then be ready for metal etch and then paint. So got it all cleaned up. One thing I forgot to mention is I also did hit uh, as many areas as I could with uh, 100 grit sandpaper. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too dirty of water, but as you can see, we definitely got some good stuff off of there. Um, so I gotta let this kind of, I'm gonna let it kind of drip dry while I'm making sure I'm clear on the instructions for the degreaser. And then uh, the next step, we'll be hitting this with the degreaser. And uh, yeah. So this is about 10 minutes later or so. I read the instructions. I'm going to mix this four parts of hot water. It's the hottest I could get out of the sink to one part of the degreaser. So got a little bottle here. I'm going to try not to spill this everywhere. I already got my water in here. Should, that should do it right there. Maybe a little extra splash. Um, and I'm just gonna spray down the truck. It looks really good. Um, and then try to keep this wet for a little while and then I'll rinse it with water um, and then be, be ready for the metal etch. So it's been degreased now. Spray
sprayed it down really good. Tried to get into all the nooks and crannies. Um, it was kind of difficult, but luckily the uh, spray bottle that I have, it works upside down. So that really helped get into uh, some of the spaces that were underneath. Um, I tried to really, really soak everything. I'm kind of letting it sit here, do its thing. And then I have to rinse it all down really thoroughly. And uh, after that, then the metal etch gets put on. After I rinse it down, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. I think I'm gonna use a combination. I think I'm gonna start with the pressure washer and try to really blast everything off. And then I'm gonna go back and hit everything one more time with the spray bottle to try and get in everywhere and make sure I got all of, all of it out. I got a bunch more stuff off, so it's looking good. rinsed off the degreaser and went really well I think I got it all rinsed off I don't know this this little pressure washer I've only used like two gallons of water um, the whole time may, maybe three that I've been spraying this down uh, since the beginning and and it's it works perfect for this it pumps out just enough water not to be like too much like where it's flooding the garage but it's like enough to where it like completely just cleans off uh the surface that i'm trying to clean and it doesn't spray everywhere i i like the rest of the garage isn't wet only the stuff like directly under the truck so it's great and i've just been squeegeeing it out and it's worked really well um so i'm gonna let this drip dry um just kind of like get it to dry out as much as it can. And then I'm gonna use the metal prep, try to keep the surface uh, wet for about 30-ish minutes. It's like 60 degrees outside and it says that it should, at, at temperatures above 70 degrees, it'll, or if it's below 70 degrees, it'll take a little longer to work. So it's like 60 degrees right now. Um, and so I'm just gonna let that sit on there and for maybe like 40 ish minutes um, and then and then I'll spray it off and then wait a couple days and then it'll be time to paint I'm gonna let it have to let it dry out completely it's got to be bone dry no moisture anywhere so I might wait two or three days um, to let it completely air dry and if it's a little longer than that the better so it'll just be however long I can wait before I uh, want to get back into it so. spraying the metal prep um, still got to sit for like another 30 ish minutes um, but this is this is what I wanted to see here this little uh, white residue building up um, it'll do that on all like the bare metal areas and then on the rusty spots it'll kind of turn like a gray color I'm pretty sure so um, it's looking good so far but I'm gonna keep on uh, spraying it, just spritzing it so it stays wet and uh, continues to do what it needs to. I'm about to rinse off the metal edge. I'm gonna start by spraying off all of the bare metal surfaces and let that uh, the rusty surfaces sit just a little longer. Um, that's what it says to do on the instruction. So I am uh, gonna get to that and, uh, and then it'll be done and ready to paint.
been rinsed off now. Um, it's looking really, really good. Um, it's still wet. It'll look a little different, I think, when it dries. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like um, before I start painting. So now, that part came out really nice, I think. I think I'm gonna put a humidifier up here um, and shut down the garage and let the humidifier dehumidifier do its thing. Uh, hopefully that'll help it dry out a little faster. And after that, it'll be time to paint. Um, so now all we have to do is just wait. Update, it's been about three or four hours and this wall here has dried out for the most part. And this is what I was expecting to look like. I got a little nervous when it was still wet and it hadn't like changed colors at all. But after it dried out, it's like got this like white powder to it. And uh, on the areas that were really heavily rusted, it turned like gray. And this this part over here almost looks like a like rainy oil spot. It's got like a rainbowy blue color to it. Um, I did get the humidifier just shut off, um, and uh, hopefully that that helps with drying it out a little faster. I'll show you another area down here. This area it's like almost completely white, which is exactly what. I think it's supposed to happen. It's supposed to look this way and should be really good for painting. So, um, yeah, uh, another update will happen in about two or three days. It's paint day. It's currently about 40 degrees outside, but got it up to 54 in here. So, it should be enough for the paint to stick. I used the propane heater to get it warmed up in here, and I've done a couple of things so far to get prepped for today. I'll show you what those are. I laid down a sheet of cardboard to catch any paint drops, and then I also taped off the areas where I'm going to stop before I continue on down the line uh, whenever I do the next section. So I'm gonna stop there so that way I can sand it back a couple of inches and then kind of fade it in to the next spot. The dehumidifier worked great. I dumped out probably two, one to two gallons of water. Everything else is looking really good here. And this is the paint setup here. I'm going to dump some POR into a separate container to not contaminate it. I have to stir this up first, um, and then I will clean it using lacquer thinner because if you don't clean it really well, this lid will be stuck on here for good. You will never get it back off. So, uh, yeah. So I'll show you the time lapse now. a little while since I painted the truck 
And by a little while, I mean, I painted the truck on January 15th. It is now almost March 15th. It went pretty well. If I remember correctly, you guys just got done watching time lapses of me painting. And that was the first coat of gray and the first coat of black. The first coat of gray took me, I think four hours. And uh, the second coat went a lot faster. Same with the black, the second coat was, was way faster, but you gotta make sure you get a really good first coat. Uh, the black took me five hours. It was so late. I was, I don't know how I, was, I stayed awake. Um, and that stuff is, that stuff is serious. The paint, it, I got some on my knees from where my suit busted open and I still have a little spot of paint on my knee where it hasn't, hasn't come off yet. And I had some on my wrist that wore off a long time ago though. It, uh, I don't know, it just, it just did. So the only area that I think that I may have messed up a little bit on was from the first coat of gray to the second coat of gray. I got done with it and I think that the part, since it took me four hours, I think that the part that I started on had probably already cured, but I waited an additional two hours. And by the time that I came back out here, I was, I just went and did something else. By the time that I got out here, it was already like cured. Um, so I probably should have gone through the process of sanding it down. We'll have to see, it's kind of an experiment at this point. Hopefully I'll do better with the um, second and third section that I'm going to do. But I did a couple of test like spots where I where I beat the crap out of it with a pair of pliers and kind of scraped it with the edge of it. And um, it seemed to hold up really well. But if it did um, crack, it like flaked off and um, just revealed that first gray layer, I think. Um, so I don't think that it fully adhered to it because it wasn't wasn't quite wet when I when I applied the second coat. But I I I just went went for it you know I tried to put it on as fast as I could that second coat to try and you know catch up and and keep it wet and then the 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 first coat of black that I did I did that only probably a couple hours it dried way faster than I thought because it was pretty cold here when I did that and I got the heater going which may have warmed it up a little bit but it was also humid outside and I think the POR actually dries a little faster when it is humid outside um, it's really cold here right now um, but I just got the whole garage cleaned up so that way I can go ahead and start sanding down the second and third portion and then hopefully get that painted up before it gets too hot outside. That's basically all I've got. If you got any questions about how I went through the process, I think I did a pretty good job of showing the um, process except for the sanding portion, but uh, I tried to do my best to explain how I went about that. Um, yeah, uh, last thing that I'm going to show is just, uh, how, uh, a little test for you, show you, uh, me, me beating on it and, uh, just showing how well m my application held up. Like I said, I think it could be a, a lot better, um, but this is what I've got as of right now. This is what it looks like after it's fully dry. You can see there's a couple of spots where I was testing it, like here and here, and you can kind of see what I was talking about, how it just kind of cracks and goes down to that uh, first layer there. Hopefully it doesn't completely peel off and just come off in giant sheets and stuff. Um, but if, if I start seeing little spots like this, I'll probably just hit it with rattle can if it's really bothering me. But this is going to be better than nothing. Um, and this is going to be a demonstration of... What, what I'm talking about. Like, I feel like that's pretty good. And sorry if that was loud. And it's got pretty good scratch resistance too. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not gonna be perfect, but I feel like what I just did there represents probably a good percentage of what's gonna be hitting your car if, if that hard. And uh, I, think, I think it'll hold up pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with how it came out overall. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, leave a like. Thank you.